Hi guys and welcome to this video on communications and connections. My name is Darren, otherwise known as the Maths Guru, or Maths Guru, which has nothing to do with married at first sight. We'll just leave that one there. If you are new, welcome. Thanks very much for seeing us. Hopefully you'll find it useful. Um, if you are an old hand, thanks very much for coming back. Please spread the word and let people know about these videos. Right, what we're going to do today, we're going to understand communication pathways and connections and represented by matrices. We're going to understand how we can analyze these matrices to provide useful information about networks. Networks? Did you hold on a moment? When did this become an ICT course? Well, it didn't become an ICT course, but believe it or not, we're all part of a network. How many of you have Facebook? Ooh, probably very few of you. I know Facebook is for old people like me. I get it. I'm not that old. I just look it terribly, terribly depressing. Uh, going to recap some past learning, but it's useful to know, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't already, that Maths Guru, M A W F S Guru.com, is basically a repository for all these videos, sorted by textbook, in chapters, it's got time codes, downloadable lesson notes. What do you mean, downloadable lesson notes? Yes, downloadable lesson notes. Just pause this video, head over there, download the notes, write all over them. So, whatever I do, I will write, but you might want to put more down. Yes, what else is there? Exam questions, so such more, and it's free to sign up. Tell your mates. Now, in a previous lesson, we looked at the network can be represented by a matrix. Okay, so um, the internet is basically a massive network of computers. You should already know that, yeah? So basically your computer connects to another, it connects to a hub, it connects to the school, it connects somewhere else. Just this massive network. And what we can do is we can show connections in the network by effectively dots and lines. So where there is a dot, there is a sort of a computer if you want, and where there is a line, there is some sort of connection. It doesn't have to be physical, okay? It can be sort of a Wi-Fi connection if that were. It's still a connection, it's still connecting to your hub or your router, and that's connecting somewhere else. Yeah, now, because Barry is such a pain in the butt, he's come up once again with stupid words. What do I mean by that? Well, you now need to know the word vertex and edge. The vertex is basically a point. And an edge is basically a line connecting two points or vertices, yes? So we have vertices and edges rather than points and lines. So I'm going to probably use points and lines, just know for your exam or whatever else. That, that's where we are now. Generally speaking, we stand a 1 for when there is a connection and we put a 0 when there is no connection. You're going to try and say, well, what do you mean a 1 and a 0? Where am I putting these 1 and zeros? Well, ladies and gentlemen, chill. Because uh, I'm fairly sure, have you noticed that with this general mass course, that basically pretty much all of the content we're doing has some sort of Hollywood movie theme? Mm -hmm. Matrix, see what I mean? Social networks, see what I mean? Moving on, I have no idea what the next movie is going to be to, but we'll get on. Sadly, this has nothing to do with Facebook. No one should have anything to do with Facebook, really. Okay, so the diagram below shows a communications within a group of friends. So the first thing I want you to do is look at this diagram here that I've just drawn that red arrow over. And you've got Vicky, Stephen, Paul, and Kathy. All right, now what on earth is that all about? Well, that is basically, let's call it a friendship group, a social network. The arrows tell you in the diagram, not my red arrow, the blue arrows tell you who can talk to each other. So obviously these are all quite nice people. They're all talking to each other. They're not ignoring anybody. There's none of that social rubbish that we have to deal with in life. They're all talking to each other. Yes, so there is a connection between all of them. Now, if there is no connection directly between them, it means that they aren't necessarily talking. So where would that be in this situation? If you notice Vicky and Paul, there is no arrow going directly between them. Now, what that means is there's no direct communication path. Now, obviously, Vicky could talk to Paul through Kathy, or Vicky could talk to Paul through Stephen. We're going to come to that in just a moment. Now, obviously, at any point, as I say, if you want to pause these videos, think about it, rewind, play, make sure it understands. So, if there is no arrow directing, so hey, these links are called one-step communications. So what I'm saying here is that line between Vicky and Stephen is called a one-step communication because there is just one step between communicating, i.e. they can talk to each other. So a one-step communication, they can talk to each other, yeah? Record the social links in a matrix N using the first letter of each name to label the columns and rows. Now again, when we have matrices, if you remember from the previous video where we had examples of real world situations, each of these rows stands for something. Each of the columns stands for something. So what I've decided is to have the first row stand for Vicky, and then, uh, what would that be, Kathy, Stephen, and Paul. 
Now, generally speaking, when we do these matrices, the order we have the letters in on the columns, we keep for the rows. So again, you'll notice it goes V, K, S, and P in exactly that order. So let's just go through a couple of the examples and see what it says. If we look at this zero here, remember a zero means there is no connection. What on earth does that mean? Well, because it's Vicky connecting to Vicky, that means Vicky talks to herself. Now, obviously, we don't really want to have anyone talking to themselves because they'll end up in a nice white uh, ambulance rocking gently to themselves, and that's not a great thing, right? So Vicky doesn't talk to themselves. And in fact, if we notice all the way down here, <sighs> Kathy doesn't talk to Kathy, Stephen doesn't talk to Stephen, and Paul doesn't speak to Paul. So that's actually quite interesting to notice, yeah? Now, let's have a look at the next value. Let's look at this one here, the one I've highlighted in yellow, K. Now, if we notice, we've got K and V. That is on the K column and the V row. So there, we're now looking at, is there a connection between Kathy and Vicky? Well, yes, there is. There's my connection, so that's why that's a one, because Kathy can talk to Vicky. But what do we also notice, because the arrow is double-headed, because that vertical arrow has two ways on it, it also means that Vicky talks to Kathy. Oh, very exciting. Let's go to the next one. Let's look at this one here. Let's say Stephen and Vicky. How do I know it's Stephen and Vicky? Stephen column, Vicky row. So is there a connection between Stephen and Vicky? Yes, there is. And because it's a double-headed arrow going across, we now know that Vicky talks to Stephen. Do you notice there's a bit of symmetry happening here? If I draw a dotted line down the leading diagonal, remember that's called the leading diagonal, what we now notice is there is some symmetry. That value there seems to match val that value there, seems to match that value there. Likewise, we have a beautiful set of symmetry here. Now, the reason we have symmetry here is because they're both communicating with each other, or people are communicating with each other outside of Vicky and Paul. And what we notice is, if we look at the Vicky and Paul number, it is in fact zero. All the others are ones. Explain why there is a symmetry about the leading edge of the diagonal, or the leading diagonal of the matrix. Well, again, I've just explained that. It's because the two-headed arrows mean they're talking to each other, all right? So there's two-way communication. Stephen talks to Vicky, and Vicky talks to Stephen. Now, you probably turn around and go, well, when would there be an example where they wouldn't talk to each other? Who knows? Maybe Stephen only speaks English. Vicky speaks French and English. Obviously, Stephen would be able to speak to Vicky in one way, but Vicky would not be able to speak the other way, for example. I, it's a pretty ropey example, but anyway, it's an example. What information is given by the sum of a column or row? So if we now look at a column here, Vicky, yes? Sorry, I think I said column and I meant row. I do that all the time. So if we look at that row there for Vicky, what does it actually mean? If I add those together, I get the number two. Right, well, what does that mean? Well, that two basically means that Vicky talks to two people. Vicky has a connection directly to two people. And who would that be? That would be Kathy and that would be Stephen. Now, if we add the same values in this row, for example, what do we get? Well, we get the number two again. And why? Because that two-way communication, that means they're talking backwards and forwards between each other and life is good. Yeah, so that's what it basically means. The number of people who can talk or the number of connections. N squared, oh my goodness, what is an N squared? Now, if I'm honest with you, the problem about this particular course, the general maths course, is it's sort of setting you up for next year. And if you're going to do further maths or anything further on this type of stuff, it gets a little bit more tricky. But an N squared is what we call a two-way communication, yes, or a two-step communication. Let's do that. Two-step communication. What does that mean? It means Stephen can actually talk to Kathy via Vicky. So that's what we call a two-step communication. We're using two stages to get a message, all right? So Stephen is passing it to Vicky. Vicky is passing it to Kathy. That is a two-step. Likewise, Stephen could also talk to Paul, and Paul could pass a message to Kathy, yes? So that is a two-step communication. So let's actually see what these numbers mean then. So now, we notice that our leading diagonal isn't zeros. We now have Vicky to Vicky 
as two. Now, what does that mean? It means how many ways can Vicky pass a message back to herself? You're gonna go, what? Why would Vicky pass a message back to herself? I have no idea. Chinese whispers game, who knows? Well, if we look at that, Vicky could pass a message to Stephen and Stephen could pass it straight back. That is two-step communication. That's one way Vicky can get a message to Vicky. How else? Vicky could pass a message to Kathy and then Kathy could pass a message back to Vicky. Two-step communications. Notice though that Vicky cannot pass a message to Paul and then back to Vicky. That would actually be not a right way of doing it. If we now move on and look at Kathy to Vicky, so Kathy passing through someone to then get to Vicky, how many ways are there of doing that? Kathy can actually only pass through Stephen to get to Vicky. There's only one way of doing that, yes, because Kathy can't pass through Paul because Paul has then no direct link to Kathy. So that again is a two step communication, but there's only one of those. And should we check the next one? Stephen to Vicky. So Stephen can only go via Kathy to Vicky because Paul can't be used. One of the interesting ones then is this three here. Let's look at this here. Kathy to Kathy. How on earth is that a three? Well, let's try and work it out. So Kathy back to Kathy. Ah, well, hold on a moment. Because Kathy can talk to three people, there must be three ways of talking to someone and then getting it back to them. So if we look at it, Kathy can go to Vicky and back to Kathy. Kathy can go to Stephen and back to Kathy. And Kathy can go to Paul who can hand it back to Kathy. But notice obviously with Vicky to Vicky, because Vicky doesn't talk to Paul, there's only two ways of doing it. So these th uh, three, uh, two, sorry, two step communications are actually awesome. How do you do it? Well, you'll notice there you've got the value of n squared. And you're gonna go, well, what on earth does that n squared mean? Believe it or not, it's rules on how your calculator can do it. If I go back here to my value here, I should really have just put n here is equal to that. Now, I haven't got the CAS all set up for this because I just took the values from the CAS, but I promise you that if you had to find n to be this here in your CAS, and you, there are previous videos showing you how to do that, then all I have to do is type into my calculator n squared and out comes that value as well. So I suppose the question is, what on earth would n cubed be? Oh yeah, three step communications, right? How can I get a message in three ways around that? Stuff is funky, yeah? Use the matrix n squared to find the number of two step ways that Kathy communicates with Stephen and write the connection. So find the number of two step ways Kathy communicates with Stephen. So Kathy and Stephen, if we look at that, that is there. Ideally, what do we notice Stephen and Kathy? Again, do you notice we have symmetry through this thing as well? So it doesn't matter. Right, so there are two ways of doing it for Stephen, sorry, to Kathy to communicate with Stephen. So let's see, Kathy, to someone, to Stephen, and Kathy to someone else, to Stephen, who is that? So Kathy can go to Vicky, so we can go Vicky to Stephen, or Kathy to Paul to Stephen. And again, understanding these things is gonna make your life so much easier next year. If the N squared matrix, there is a three where column S meets, this indicates that there are three two-step communications Stephen can have with himself. Explain this can be, uh, explain how this can be given a sensible interpretation. Don't understand the question, but again, what this value of three means, if you remember, is that so Kathy to Kathy and Stephen to Stephen just means that there are three ways of Stephen to communicate back to himself with one other person. So as I say, Stephen to Vicky to Stephen, Stephen to Kathy to Stephen, and Stephen to Paul to Stephen, yeah? So again, there, and if an exam question came up with a scenario, I'm fairly sure you could do that. Well, believe it or not, that is it for the General Maths Moment of Communication Networks. Love, 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 love. Again, all done on your CAS. You've just got to understand what each of those numbers mean. There are a couple more minutes of video left. Thank you very much for watching again. Darren Maths Guru, MathsGuru.com is there. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please listen to the last couple of minutes of this video. If not, I hope to see you in another one.
Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye-bye. Stay safe.